Good afternoon. Thank you for your patience. Uh, we'll start with uh, short introductory remarks uh, with the Secretary General and the President of Poland. Secretary General. President uh, Duda, it's a great uh, pleasure and honor to welcome you here at uh, the NATO headquarters. Uh, and uh, uh, we last uh, met uh, just a few weeks after you were uh, elected uh, as uh, president uh, last uh, summer. And uh, when I visited uh, Poland uh, last summer and met with you, that was in uh, connection with uh, the first exercise of the new spearhead force of uh, NATO, uh, which were exercising in uh, Poland. So uh, that was uh, just... Uh, Another example of uh, how uh, we are working together and uh, how NATO is uh, adapting to a new and more challenging uh, security uh, environment. And ever since um, uh, Poland joined uh, NATO, uh, Poland has uh, proven to uh, be a very uh, strong ally and a committed ally. Today you are committing practically with uh, hundreds of uh, troops building security in Afghanistan and in uh, Kosovo, with exercises uh, on land, uh, at sea, and in the air, and with uh, contributions uh, to Baltic air policing and uh, maritime uh, patrols. You are also committing uh, politically, including through strong support for our partners. You lead our logistics um, Trust Fund for Ukraine, and help uh, with uh, defense uh, education. And Poland is uh, committing uh, financially. You devote uh, 2% of uh, gross domestic uh, product uh, to defense, with uh, 30% of that uh, to be spent on uh, investments in modern uh, equipment. This is significant, and it shows uh, uh, Poland's uh, leadership, and we thank you for that. There is um, a lot of Poland in NATO, and a lot of NATO in Poland. You host our multinational core northeast in Czechin, and one of our new force integration units, small headquarters. Both will make uh, rapid deployment of our forces easier and will support uh, planning and exercises. You also host uh, the Joint Force Training Center in Budgos, which is part of the NATO command structure. This spring, uh, we will break ground for a key site in Poland for NATO's uh, ballistic missile uh, defense and a significant number of allied exercises have taken place in Poland, with uh, many others uh, underway. Over the past year, we have been implementing the biggest reinforcement of our collective defense since the end of the Cold War. NATO now has persistent military presence in the region uh, of which uh, Poland is part. And I trust that after the Warsaw Summit, we will see more NATO in Poland than ever before. Today, we discussed the preparations for the Warsaw Summit, which are well on track. We are fundamentally adapting our alliance to the challenges we face to a more challenging security environment. We all must ensure uh, that uh, when we leave the summit, the alliance is stronger and more flexible. And committed as firmly as ever to the values on which NATO was founded, democracy, individual liberty, and the rule of law. These values are, vital, uh, are a vital source of our unity and unity is our greatest strength. So, Mr. President, I look really forward to working with you to make the Warsaw Summit a great success. So, once again, welcome to NATO headquarters, and we are looking forward to work closely with you and your staff in the preparations for the summit in July. Welcome. 
Panie Sekretarzu Generalny, Szanowni Państwo. Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much for all these words, which uh, demonstrate the Polish presence in NATO and also the realistic presence of NATO in Poland so well. So our main topic of our discussions was the upcoming North Atlantic Organization Summit in Warsaw, whose principal objective is, in my opinion, to strengthen the security both of Central Europe and of the southern flank of our continent. These are the two fronts or directions where the strengthening of security is especially needed. Uh, two elements are uh, here considered. One is that NATO is a joint uh, alliance where 28 countries are together responsible for their joint security. So that's one thing. Secondly, that security is advisable. It must be protected and NATO needs to be adequately prepared to face the threats. In other words, the organizations must be alive and kicking must respond, respond to the threats and must be forward-looking. So this is why we want the uh, summit in Warsaw achieve three objectives. First, to be universal. In other words, we should formulate a response and take decisions both in terms of security of Eastern Europe and the southern flanks to strengthen both. Secondly, we want the summit to be forward-looking, namely that the decisions that we will take remain actual and become or transform into a vision uh, for the future course of events so that we are protected if that happens. And thirdly, we want this uh, summit to be a decisive summit so that we can take precise, concrete, specific decisions on strengthening of the deterrence and defense potential of our organization. This is the most essential thing. We need to demonstrate a potential attacker that the attack against any of the NATO member states will not pay off. So this is why we turn our gaze to the south and to the uh, eastern flank of NATO. These activities are not the only ones. We should also at the same time remember that today we shouldn't talk about enemies being anywhere. We have certain problems with the security architecture in our parts of Europe, but for that we need dialogue. And first and foremost, I think about the dialogue with Russia. We shouldn't neglect the dialogue, but also we should conduct this dialogue under the current, um, uh, given the current issues. That includes also the problem of adhering to the international law, which is, in my opinion, the guarantee for the global peace. So strengthening security, adapting the treaty to the new circumstances, which means, one, strengthening NATO presence in the Central Europe, both in terms of infrastructure and troops, and this remains to be decided. And this is what we're going to talk about with the member states' representatives, the Secretary General and his staff, and myself too, because I'm planning to meet the leaders of the NATO members and talk about those issues, namely how this presence should be organized, should manifest itself. I insist on one thing, to make it as permanent as possible. The point is that the NATO troops are deployed and visible in Eastern Europe to give the security guarantee by their, by their presence and at the same time to be augmented by the infrastructure securing their, their deployment. Also, when it comes to any reinforcement or support that they deserve when any act of aggression takes place. So this our safe security architecture should be absolutely built up. 
Now, referring to the summit, in my opinion, we should make sure that we give a clear signal that the doors to NATO are still open, which takes into consideration the participation of our uh, partners in NATO who may be members of the NATO of NATO in the future, such as um, uh, Sweden, Finland, maybe Australia, Jordan, Georgia. We shouldn't, in the context, we shouldn't forget in the context of the summit and architecture security architecture of uh, Moldova. Uh, that was a very good meeting with Secretary General. We still have a lot of work ahead of us. And the February uh, Minister of Defense meeting will be of essential importance. So we have a lot of work in front of us in the coming months. But I believe that we will do our homework. And thanks to that work, the architecture of security in the eastern and southern flanks of NATO will be considerably strengthened. Just a few questions. Uh, I'll start with the lady over there. Dorota Bawołek, Telewizja Polsat. The first question to both gentlemen. There are more and more allies who, due to other challenges to NATO, or fight against terrorism and the Syria conflict, see uh, their next ally in Russia, try to build a coalition with Russia in order to combat those threats together. So, therefore, is there a chance to implement the Polish postulates in terms of increasing the presence of NATO on the the eastern flank without, um, without uh, tickling Russia? Will other uh, allies? Will the summit in Warsaw happen for sure? Are you sure for 100% about that? Because there are some signals from the United States that there are some doubts. You said that the countries uh, of NATO should respect the rule of law. The rule of law in Poland is currently under supervision of the European Commission. If until summer there will be some more signals of unhappiness from the EU institutions, uh, some more doubts about it, is it possible that the place of the summit will be changed? The uh, decision to uh, have the... Uh, uh, next summit in Warsaw was taken by 28 heads of state and uh, government uh, uh, at our last summit in uh, Wales uh, in uh, September 2014. And uh, there is no issue at all to uh, discuss uh, to uh, uh, change that decision. So that uh, decision stands and uh, uh, we are actually looking very much forward to have the summit in Warsaw and the preparations are on track. And the president and I, we uh, discussed uh, uh, a wide range of issues which are related in different ways to the preparations for the next uh, summit in uh, Warsaw. So I'm looking forward uh, to the uh, summit in Warsaw in uh, July. Uh, when it comes to your first question, uh, I think it's important to underline that NATO faces a changed and more challenging security environment, both because of the behavior of Russia, a more assertive Russia, a Russia which is investing heavily in defense, uh, which is uh, exercising its uh, troops, and, uh, and uh, uh, which is able and willing to use force to change borders in Europe, as we have seen uh, in, uh, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, the annexation of uh, Crimea and uh, uh, the policy of destabilizing eastern uh, Ukraine and also having forces uh, in uh, Georgia. So uh, NATO has to respond to a more assertive Russia, uh, which is uh, uh, conducting a substantial military uh, build-up close to our borders. At the same time, we have to respond uh, to the turmoil, to the violence, to the instability, uh, we see to the south uh, with terror uh, and the threats stemming from North Africa and the Middle East. 
And NATO does not have the luxury of uh, choosing between either responding to the challenges stemming from the south or the challenges stemming from the east. We have to do both at the same time. And that's the reason why we are adapting. That's the reason why we have implemented the biggest reinforcement of our collective defense since the end of the Cold War. And that's the reason why we are increasing the readiness and the responsiveness of our forces so we are able uh, to defend, uh, protect all allies against any threat, whether uh, they come from uh, the east or the south or wherever they come from. Madam, let me answer you right away. Of course, within the North Atlantic Alliance, there are 28 nations, and often those nations have got different interests. Nevertheless, I am convinced about one thing, namely that some issues are obvious for all. It is an obvious thing that Russia, over the last years, has conducted a series of activities which cannot be uh, called uh, differently than an aggression. It is also obvious that Russia is building up its military potential, and uh, in a very clear way, it has been demonstrating it through different exercises, through such actions which are named by some North Atlantic alliances as activities of provocative nature, of testing nature. They are testing the resilience, both political and to a certain extent also psychological um, resilience of those who are taking important decisions uh, in the North Atlantic Alliance countries. That is why I strongly believe that all these phenomena are being followed by all the nations of the North Atlantic Alliance. If Russia today is building up its military potential, for instance, in the Kaliningrad Oblast or uh, near the borders of Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and other places, the following question arises, why is it doing that? And whether such actions, which are clearly, well, because uh, no provocative actions are exercised against Russia in those areas, uh, there are no uh, offensive weapons there. So the question is, why is Russia engaged in such an activity? Quite logical answer is that, unfortunately, these actions are not purely of defensive character. And if so, then taking into account the nature of the North Atlantic Alliance, which I want to stress very strongly, the North Atlantic Alliance is a defense alliance, purely defense alliance. It is, it is absolutely not aimed at any kind of expansion or any actions of offensive nature. It is only defensive in nature. Nature. A natural consequence of that is strengthening the defense potential. And I hope that every single member of the alliance following what is happening in the international space is seeing those phenomena and understands them. Of course, also, we are seeing situations with a decreased level of security at the southern flank of NATO, and we also need to take adequate action there, action which will strengthen us as far as anti-terrorist actions are concerned, which will strengthen our security vis-a-vis uh, -vis the ISIL. All of these are the elements which in a natural way are uh, outlined in front of NATO. NATO has to face up in an adequate way to all those challenges. And I count on common sense in this respect on the part of the member states, and I count on their approach full of understanding, even from those nations which uh, geographical location is distant from the places which are facing problems and threats today. Just one last question, Wall Street Journal in the center. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, President, um, do you think, uh, what is the minimum uh, troop presence that you would be satisfied with uh, being approved at the Warsaw Summit? Is it enough to uh, increase the size of the multinational core northeast, or do you want to see an actual uh, combat troop presence, uh, persistence presence in Poland or the Baltics? And if they don't, will that weaken deterrence? Mr. Secretary General, I wonder if you are worried about the rule of law issues uh, in Poland, challenges to the independent judiciary and press, and do you think that these controversies will weaken um, the support for uh, increasing a troop presence in Poland at the Warsaw Summit? Let me answer in the following way. Yes, oh, in such a way that the security of eastern NATO flank is provided, is truly provided. Today, 
there are indications showing that what we need to do is both to have significant presence of both infrastructure and uh, troops on the ground in Central and Eastern Europe, and we also need a well-developed system for supporting those troops, for supporting defense, if any kind of an aggressive act happened. Uh, we want uh, NATO forces to be visible, which uh, means common exercises, improving uh, coordination of actions, and I believe that this is the direction in which we should be developing our cooperation, and in this direction, we we should also be taking decisions at the Warsaw Summit. Let me stress once again, we very much count on this uh, summit to be decision-making summit, a uh, forward-looking summit, uh, which will be a universal summit, so that it builds the infrastructure of the North Atlantic Alliance in the sense of its adaptation to the current security circumstances. President uh, Duda and I, we had uh, full and uh, wide-ranging talks covering uh, many different uh, issues. And of uh, course, uh, naturally, we also uh, discussed uh, the importance of uh, adhering to uh, the core values of uh, uh, NATO. Uh, and uh, uh, I think we all understand that uh, the core uh, values of NATO being democracy, individual liberty and the rule of law uh, are important for uh, all allies and uh, are important for uh, the alliance. They were important when the alliance was established and they are uh, still important uh, uh, for the alliance. Uh, and uh, uh, for me these values are important because uh, they are uh, key for the unity of the uh, alliance. And the unity is the most important uh, uh, strength uh, of the alliance because uh, the whole alliance is based on uh, the idea of 28 uh, for 28 uh, based on uh, some core values which we all uh, share. Thank you very much.